Welcome everyone to Serving Up Plumbing with David Butler. Today, we're talking tankless again. And what are we talking about today? Manometers. What do we use them for? What do they tell us? All these sorts of things. But first, make sure and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And please let me know your comments, what you think about the video, or what you'd like to see in the future. All right, let's talk about manometers. <laughs> I'm gonna be talking to you today about how manometers pertain to tankless water heaters and the history of the manometer, what it's been used for in the past, other things like that, how it came about and how we got from uh, almost an archaic ancient type manometer to the digital extremely intelligent manometers of today. Well, first of all, manometers are used for a lot of things. In our service, we do residential service only, one and two family dwellings. We use manometers for our tankless water heater troubleshooting. You use manometers on boilers of all different types. Guys in commercial work have been using manometers for years and on all kinds of type of boilers and burners and things like that. Sometimes you need a manometer on a furnace burner to see if you're getting the right gas flow going through it. And that's what a manometer checks for you is your gas flow. How much gas am I getting? And am I getting enough gas for what I need on my fixture? right? My appliance. The manometers of today read lots of different scales. I mean, this one right here, you can cycle through, you notice it has a scale button on it. You can cycle through millibars, kilopascals, ounces, inches of water column, feet of water column, all kinds of things, pounds. We don't use most of those things in gas, but these can be used for a lot of different places. And plus a lot of different countries measure it differently than we do. What we use most of the time though, is inches of water column on low pressure, which on a manometer like this says, inches of H2O, inches of water. And on the medium pressure, we are still using inches of water column or we can use ounces. Now the gas company measures their gas systems in ounces. Don't ask me why we can't get on the same page, but we measure our low pressure in inches of water column. And our medium pressure or our hybrid pressure systems on residential are generally two pounds. So we can read that in pounds or ounces, or the water column on that is gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 32 to 36 inches of water column. I keep talking about water column. Well, where did we get water column? What does it mean when I say inches of water column? If we have four ounce gas pressure that the gas company has put on the system, we're gonna be reading somewhere around a seven inch water column. Now, what does that mean? Well, to know that, we need to know where the original manometer came from. And what the original manometer was, was actually reading water column. So, a U-tube manometer is what we've used for a long time. We call these manometers U-tube manometers. Now, that's U like the letter U, not U-tube like you go watch a video, or this video, hopefully. So, it's a U-tube manometer. How does that work? Well, you're gonna see in these pictures, we actually have a U-tube of liquid. And what happens? We put pressure on one side of that tube and it pushes the water column up in the tube. Now to us plumbers, this looks kind of like a P-trap. Well, basically it is a trap. We're trapping the water in a U-tube. Well, however far it pushes that water up is how many inches of water column you have. You have a zero mark, which would be at the weir of the trap that we would say as a plumber. That means that both levels of the water are the same at zero inches. When we add gas pressure or any type of air pressure to one side of that, it's going to push that water column upwards so many inches. And that inches that it pushes that up is your inches of water column. Pretty ingenious, huh? Pretty simple at that. I was using these back in the 80s. That's where inches of water column came from. Now we do it on our digital manometers, on our analog manometers, we don't measure much anymore with YouTube manometers. I'm sure there's still a lot of guys out there that use them because they are very accurate and they're very durable. You don't have to worry about batteries. You don't have to worry about them breaking if you get them dropped. And there's lots of kinds of manometers now. As you can see in the pictures again, I said there's the digital ones. There's more expensive digital ones made by like UEI. There's lesser expensive ones you can buy on Amazon. They both work well. The only difference is the less you pay for it, likely, the less time it's gonna last. You buy a nice UEI manometer that's got an armored case on it and everything, you can drop that thing. It's got magnetic sticker on the back that you can stick it on your tank, all these things. 
you get what you pay for, right? You're gonna pay about 130 to 150 bucks for a really good UEI one. You're gonna pay about 50 to $60 for a less expensive one. It's whatever you can afford to invest, but you need to have a manometer. And these days, testing tankless, it really needs to be a digital and not an analog. So now that we know what a manometer is and what the inches of water column is and where it came from and everything, now what does that tell us? Well, as we talked about, it tells us about your gas pressure. It tells us how much gas pressure we have. When we're working with those gas pressures and using a manometer, we have two kinds of gas pressure. Static gas pressure and working gas pressure. Now static means nothing's moving, nothing's turned on your tankless is not running. There's no gas being burnt going through the tankless. That's static, that means nothing's happening right now. The flip side of that is working gas pressure. Working gas pressure means we've got the bathtub running and that tankless is running. We have static and working gas pressure so we can find out the difference between the two. That's what's the most important thing. It's the pressure differential between the static and the working. That lets us know if our gas is sized correctly. Now, the inlet gas pressure tells us the static pressure. That means if we just hook it on with nothing running, as I mentioned before, that's the static pressure. The working pressure is when it's running. The difference between the two tells us what is the pressure drop. If you drop more than two inch water column when it kicks on, you probably don't have enough gas to your system. That means either the piping is sized wrong or the regulators aren't working correctly if it's a hybrid system with regulators. And that's what it tells us. Rule of thumb, two inch water column. If it drops more than two inch water column between static and working pressure, we need to figure out what's going on with the system by sizing or regulators, and we need to get that fixed. One last thing that we don't use as often, but the manometer will tell us this, is is our gas control valve working properly? Now, when I say our gas control valve, that's the main inlet gas valve that's on our tankless. If it's failing, we're not gonna be getting enough gas to the burner. So, there is one last manometer port that's inside the unit that you hook onto, and that's your manometer gas pressure. Now, unless you've got a service manual, you're probably gonna have to call technical support to get the exact values this should be. But, if the tankless won't come on, and it won't fire off, and you never get any gas pressure going through your manifold gas pressure port, could be that you've got a problem with your gas control valve. This is very rare that this happens on tankless water heaters. I've replaced maybe two in my entire time of working on tankless water heaters since 1998. But it can happen, and that's the one last thing that a manometer can tell you. Now I realize this is kind of a brief overview. Some of you out there are gonna say, oh, well, he didn't say this, he didn't say that, you can add more in. Absolutely. But I'm trying to get you a basic knowledge of how to use a gas manometer on a tankless water heater and what it's going to tell you. And that's what we're looking to accomplish today. Well, I hope that's been helpful. I hope it's helped you learn what is a manometer for, why it's important that you have one, and the two different things that it can tell you. You need to know that static and working pressure and lastly, the manifold pressure if you need to. Hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and let me know your thoughts and how you've used a manometer. Remember to tell your friends, the butler did it.